What's going on guys? This is Nick from Budget Build Garage and on today's episode I'm going to show you how to properly install your distributor and set your baseline timing so you can go ahead and break in your cam quickly. Um, if you saw the last episode you know I did get this thing started, you know I did get the cam broken in, but honestly I didn't really show a lot about how to install the distributor and I think it's kind of a really important part. It's a lot of things, I think it's one of those things that a lot of people don't quite know exactly how to get it first try. Um, if you saw the episode, other than some mild electrical stuff we had under there, once we got that sorted out, it pretty much snapped far right up and I will show you guys how to do that right now. Okay. Now that we're here at the car, the first thing we're going to do is we'll start by prepping the engine to get ready to drop in the distributor. And what I mean by prepping the engine is we need to get it close to top dead center. Um, what I've done is I've put a white mark on the actual timing tab at zero. It just makes it a lot easier to see. I couldn't get it to show up on camera too well even with the white mark, but when you're actually timing with the timing light, if you use the white mark on that as well as on the dampener and you just bring the two marks together, it's so much easier than trying to actually read the dampener. So I went ahead and put the mark on that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a spark plug out of the number one cylinder, which happens to be right here. All right. Once that's out, what we're gonna do is put a wrench, socket wrench or something, breaker bar, on the harmonic balancer bolt so we can rotate the motor over slowly. If you have a second person in the car and there's no distributor in it, he can bump the starter a little bit and you'll be able to feel like a gust of air coming out of this number one spark plug hole. I don't have a second person right now, so I'm gonna try and rotate it while I feel down here. Let's see if I can do this. Also, don't put your finger in the hole, just over the hole. Alright, there we go. Now, once you do that, I like to put a white mark on the timing, on the timing marks on the balancer as well. I'm going to put that mark at about 13 degrees. That way when we fire this thing up, we just need to bring those two white dots together. I'll show you what I mean right now. Alright, so now that I have both of my white marks more or less lined up, I'm pretty much ready to drop in the distributor. Um, if you've never put one of these things in, it can be a little bit weird and a little bit confusing for your first time. And Let me show you what I'm talking about. This right here is a distributor we're using on this. It's the one I fired it up with. It's got mechanical advance. There's no vacuum module here or anything like that. When you insert a distributor, pretty much any distributor, you're gonna pick which one of these terminals you want to be number one. The way you decide, the way you choose, is you think about your wiring and how big your cap is and anything else and make sure it won't interfere and you'll be able to rotate it a decent amount. That's actually how you choose which one of these is going to be your number one. Any one of them can be number one. Odds are, though, a lot of guys are using something like this. Something like this is much, much bigger, obviously. You need to be able to run vacuum line here. You need to be able to plug it in here. Usually, I usually put this on this side, you know, kind of facing the passenger. I, I usually just find better luck with that as far as fitment. And there's usually enough room with the wires back and forth. Something like this is going to limit which one of these can be your number one. So kind of eyeball it, put it where you want, make sure you think you can go back and forth with it, and then pick one of these to be number one. Now my wiring is on that side. I made sure I have plenty of it when I chose this one as number one. When you drop this thing in, usually I'll take the cap off. And I'll make the mark on number one like I already did, and I'll also put it right here. Now, once the cap's off, we have your rotor. 
you're going to want to face the rotor at number one. That way, when you plug this thing in, this thing's ready to fire number one cylinder, which is pretty much where we're timed. Um, it's kind of the easiest way, in my opinion, to do it. At this point, it's as easy as dropping it in and then kind of building your spark plug wires, and we're good. We should have to do that right now. So, with the number one mark right here, we're going to go ahead, point at the number one cylinder, and drop it in. Also making sure the rotor is pointed as close to as I can get it. Now, you can feel the cam gear kind of twist and rotate that rotor under the cap. So what you're going to want to do is clock it backwards a bit so it'll so it'll click into place. Just like that. Okay. Now, if it doesn't go all the way completely flush right away, what's happening is your oil pump drive and the actual gear on it aren't meshed right. Don't try to take this thing off and um, yeah, don't try to take it off and realign it with the screwdriver. That's a waste of time. As long as you know you're engaged, you could just rotate the motor and it will fall into place, which is exactly what I'm going to do when I grab that wrench that I moved that I shouldn't have. Dang. Yeah, as you can see, it fell right down where are perfect now. We are pretty good actually. So I'm gonna snug this down a little bit so this will it'll still move freely, but just not quite as easily. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the cap on. We know this thing can only go on what this thing will only go on one way because it is notched. Once we put it on, that's our number one. We'll start there. We'll put the spark plug wire from here, go into the number one cylinder, and we will follow the firing order. So this will be one, eight, four, three, so on and so forth. And once we do that, we'll put this, we gotta put the spark plug back in, and this thing will be ready to fire up, and I will show you how to use the timing light. Now do the spark plugs in order. That way, you know, you don't get them wrong, but I've done this enough times, so I'm not doing them in order. I'm doing which ones I have right here in my hand. Alright, this right here, this is a timing light. There's nothing special about this one that makes some really cool ones. Um, I don't own any really cool ones. I own this one. I've had it forever. Um, it's pretty simple to use. You have a positive and a negative that you hook up to your battery terminal. And you have this clamp here, which goes on over your number one spark plug, pointed towards the actual spark plug itself. Some of them have arrows. A lot of them don't need it. The older ones usually don't need it. but that's how it works. Um, once I hook this thing up, I'm going to go ahead and fire it. I'll do my best to show you the two timing marks coming together. I'm just going to be rotating the distributor until I get them there, just in case you can't hear me over the exhaust. So I'll show you that right now. Up or down? Down. And then do I just hold let it? Go? Just hold it until it starts and let it go.
All right, so we fired it up, fired up pretty easy. You saw me twist the distributor cap and bring those two dots together, like I said. We're sitting at about 13 degrees base timing. Um, we only did the base timing in this video just to get your car started so you can break in that cam. Um, it's really important to try and get those things started as smoothly and easily and quickly as possible so you don't cause any long-term damage. Um, really, that's it for this episode of Budget Bill Garage. If you have any questions or comments or likes, subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you on the next episode.